One is very, very active. Tax planning is an active thing. It's something you have to be proactive about, and it has to happen during a calendar year. Tax reporting, on the other hand, is very reactive. You're responding to what has already occurred the year before, telling the IRS your story. The difference between planning and reporting is as different, is as different for night as it is today. And it's important that you understand those two. As we talk about when taxes mean investing, join us on Consider This Program. We will break down for you things you need to consider within tax reporting. Welcome to Consider This Program. I'm your host, Joe Clark. And I'm Aaron Rayum. Hey, buddy. Director of Financial Planning. Aaron, happy to have you along. I should say Director of Financial Planning for the Financial Enhancement Group. Uh, happy to have you here. We are in a topic, this 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 whole show, the theme, if you will, is when taxes meet investing, except this is part two. Yes. Uh, we did this with the CPA last time. More of the aim was on reporting. The aim of this one is going to be on tax planning. What is the difference? Aaron, why don't you go ahead and give us that? Yeah, Joe, it's uh, difficult to follow the footsteps as a, of, of a CPA, but I will uh, definitely do my best. And so... Um, we try to teach the folks in our office the difference between tax planning and tax reporting. As Joe uh, opened in the show, is planning is what you can do and control throughout the year, and reporting is what you're providing your professional, your CPA, all of the documents, the resources after the year's finished up. Um, much, much different, and we'll dive into more of that through the through the show. But they are two separate things, and planning is what we control and help families control. One is very active. Right, yes. that you can be intentional about it until the calendar clock clicks. Yep. The other one, all you're doing is telling your story. You're yeah. responding or reacting to what has already occurred. Big differences between the two. Um, I don't. I'm not going to get political, and I don't want to ever in this show. Uh, but it is interesting uh, when you look back and you can examine people's tax returns, which we obviously do sure. for the families we take care of. Um, but here's where you can get into trouble between being having proper planning and then merely getting caught responding or reacting. So one of the highest positions in the United States federal government you can possibly have has to provide their tax returns every year. Mm -hmm. And people like me read said tax returns because that's our job. I'm always interested. And so in one such return in the 1990s, we saw a family that had a reasonably good income, right? had a high-paid CPA firm that was doing the tax reporting for them. And we also saw them as a, a very, very benevolent gift, a generous gift. They gave a bunch of money away to a not-for-profit when they wrote a book. <laughs> and, you know, all good things, right? The only problem is when you look at the tax return, a large part of the income that came from the book, even though they gave it all away, was taxable in the year they made the gift not because they did anything wrong, but because they didn't understand the difference between tax planning and tax reporting and how it works. So even with a, a CPA on in, in the ranks, highly paid, too. highly paid, even under the guise of having probably anybody they wanted to in the country to be able to advise them and give them counsel, they still got this wrong, you know, a, as attorneys. Uh, got it wrong. That's how confusing this stuff can be. So Aaron gave you the difference between what is active and what is passive and the difference. So what are, what are some things, Aaron, that people need to be looking at or thinking about during the tax year uh, yeah. in order to do proper tax planning? <clears throat> For us, Joe, is, is when you come in, and you mentioned this, the 1040 really tells the story. So we start from looking at the tax return and trying to pick apart the pieces that happen inside of that tax return. First thing is, do you itemize versus taking the standard deduction? Well, that tells a story. So if you itemize, there's things that we might think about. Charitable gifting, mortgage interest, state and local tax deductions. Are you doing those and taking advantage of that? And then we can guide the conversation around that. Other things that are reported on the 1040 are capital gains, uh, dividend income, interest income. And so all of that stuff has to be taken into consideration when we're looking over your unique situation. Um, and so looking at things to do differently throughout the year is looking at last year's story and seeing how we can change that going forward for this year. 
Yeah. I just had an interesting conversation, for instance, with a family that had several million dollars in an account Mm -hmm. uh, that used mutual funds. And, um, you know, I asked the question, do you understand what an exchange traded fund is? And they said yes, but their eyes said no. Right. right? And so they'd heard of them. Uh, And and I think that's, and, and folks, there's nothing wrong with that. Good Lord, if you knew, you know, somebody's coming to work on my Jeep tonight, I swear everybody in my Jeep group can figure out how to do anything to the Jeep, and then there's Joe, right? It's like a separate <laughs> picture. And, you know, it's just, my, my thing is, help, right? You know, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, and, and I can talk about a, a, a top or a tire or a, an engine, but it doesn't mean I know what's going on. I don't feel bad about that at all. I get in my Jeep, I drive to the beach with them, and we go, we go have a great time. Uh, and the same thing has to be true with your money, but there are things that are incumbent upon you if you're going to be your own fiduciary. And just remember, everybody has one, right? Everybody has a fiduciary. It's just for most of you, it's the person you look at in the mirror, mm-hmm. right? Now, about 1,200 families hire Aaron and I and our team to be their fiduciaries. That means we have to treat their money just like it were our money if we were in a similar situation. But if you're managing your 401k or you're doing it on your own, right, you're really caught in that environment. So here's this, this person who's done a great job. They've saved, like I said, 3 or $4 million in an account. They hired a broker. They thought it was a fiduciary, but they hired a broker. The broker gets paid commissions to sell things. He's not a fiduciary. They like him. They trust him. Nice guy right? But not a fiduciary. And he said, hey, here's what I think you you should consider. And they looked at it and said, that makes sense. You're the professional, right? And they took it. And so when I sit down and I broke down the difference off of their tax return, they had over $100,000 worth of capital gains on a tax return last year, and they didn't sell anything. Mm -hmm. And they didn't understand how they could have a capital gains taxation without selling anything. And the answer is it came out of the mutual funds. Even though they didn't sell anything, the archaic world of mutual funds in the non-IRA environment creates the opportunity or disadvantage of having excess tax that you simply do not need to pay anymore. Uh, There are better ways to look at it. And people just like you are learning that all of the time. And that's what we're here for. You can go to 800-928-4001 or our website at yourlifeafterwork.com. Get signed up for a Next Steps meeting. We'll cover this with you. So let's talk about the infamous Aaron DIY, right? Do, or DYI, do-it-yourselfers, right? Uh-huh. Um, what, what would happen? So let's go to the first example you gave. You said year-end gifting. Yeah. What is something common that we see and something that we might do different at the Financial Enhancement Group? Um, year-end gifting is common as folks writing checks. So, I mean, we have a lot of people that are charitable. They want to give to their church, community, whatever it is, but maybe they're not doing it in the most efficient way possible. And so they're still, you know, doing what they feel right is in their heart by doing the gifting. But in the situation you just talked about with that couple that had $100,000 in capital gains, maybe we could have restructured some of that to where we gifted appreciated assets and eliminated some of the tax consequences with that. And, and this is where they, where they go together. The best way, when I, I spent seven years teaching at Purdue, the senior level, the capstone course it was called, in financial planning. And one of the things that I told the students every year is that, you know, I'm tone deaf, just part of being Joe, right? I can talk. You don't ask me to sing, right? That's, we have this, we have this deal, <laughs> right? There right? With you. And, um, um, you know, so when you, when you look at a tax return, every line is individual, but it's like me singing. I can be in a congregation of 500 people and you will hear me, right? Because one, I'm loud. And two, it doesn't work with everybody else's singing. It just, you know, my best friends move away from me. You know, I'm there on an island. My wife's kind of holding my hand from a distance going, can you please, right? Because I'm not quiet about it, right? I mean, that's just the way, that's just the way it is. And that's why I bring this up. When you look at a tax return, most people look at it as a series of many, many numbers, and they go to the bottom and they say, here's the adjusted gross income. And invariably, or enough, you get to the taxable income. That's the part where you actually pay the IRS the mm-hmm. money. Each one of those lines is like me singing. It has the ability to work together or to be out of tune. And in this case, in that return, you know, there were six figures of charitable giving. 
There was six figures of capital gains. They should have been able to wipe each other out. They'd have got the same tax deduction. At the end of the day, they would have saved more than $15,000 in federal income tax yeah. just by doing this in the right order. So understanding the difference between planning, which is very active, mm -hmm. right? You've got to do it ahead of time in many, many, many cases. Uh, in, in doing it in a, on, your, on your own or doing it you know, afterwards with reporting gets you into trouble. Yeah. So I love the story of Andy Stanley, but it really explains how the mind works. Andy and his family had young, three young kids, moves into this new house, um, and you know they've got this picture that they love. They're in the kitchen, and there's a nail in the – I mean, I've done this, so I get it. There's a nail in the wall. So he takes the picture, he puts it on the wall, and has every intentions of moving it. He knows the picture doesn't belong there. Two years later, they've got friends over. The friend looks at the picture and being a good friend looks at Andy and says, what in the world is the picture doing there? And see, so it had become part of the way the room had looked. They mm -hmm. no longer noticed that it was out of place, even though they knew it was out of place. And one of the things that I would tell you is if you're doing this on your own, it is worth having a second set of eyes from a tax planning perspective, just because you may not know how item A and item B can work together, Yes, how they can function in concert to make sure that that 1040 is effective as it possibly can be. And here's, here's what I'll tell you to take away. You know, I've been in this industry for 33 years. I started two weeks before the crash in 87. Markets go up and down many times the same year, but sometimes it may be the next year. Right? As long as your investment policy is sound and you're able to maintain, then it doesn't matter when it goes up as long as it does over an extended period of time. Your tax return is a one-hit wonder. Folks, if you are not actively tax planning, you're missing the boat. YourLifeAfterWork.com. Get signed up for a Next Steps meeting. Look forward to meeting you.